right, so uh, thank you for being here. Uh, today I'm going to talk a bit about game development with Unity, uh, but from an Android point of view. So uh, how you can develop with Unity as Android developers. Uh, I'm Julian Selvi. I'm a senior Android engineer at Hercule, uh, the, OEP, uh, the OEP startup based in Paris. Uh, I'm into the Android world since uh, since Froyo, so it's almost now 10 years uh, that I'm developing Android apps. Uh, so I started with the Android 2.2. Uh, I'm part of the Paris Android user groups, uh, for all the Android meetups in Paris. Uh, and uh, for a bit of me, I'm listening some good punk rock music and drinking IPVs. Um, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Julian Selby. So for today, I'm going to have, have a look like a bit of, of overview of uh, game development of on, uh, on Android. Uh, then I'll talk a bit, a bit about how you can build uh, Unity plugins, uh, Android Unity plugins. Um, uh, we'll go from Unity to Android Studio and see how you can export a Unity project into a classic Android app uh, into Unity. And then I'll talk a bit about uh, Unity as a library. Uh, so that's a tool that allows us to uh, implement games into our uh, existing Android apps. And I'll show you uh, a little demo uh, at the end. So there will be uh, some live demo with uh, cool game animation and, uh, and, and stuff. You'll see that. Uh, so uh, now let's talk a bit about game development on Android. So as you can know, you, you can develop with uh, well, a game on Android from scratch with the, with the basic functionality. So uh, you can uh, build a game just with a few buttons, uh, like uh, uh, implementing a, a game like a Gaze U or something like that, or maybe a snake with all the basics component of uh, the Android development. But if you want to build some high quality games, uh, you might need to go and look into uh, some game engines like to provide high quality graphics and high quality game experience. So what are the major game engines here for Android so far? So there is Unity. Uh, Unity, you can build 2D and 3D games. Uh, the cost of uh, the platform is not so high, one of the cheapest on the market uh, for building high quality games. Uh, there are also a big RAD team, so they provide a lot of new features uh, every time. They are uh, improving their own engine all the time. Uh, and they have also a great asset store uh, that provide us some uh, uh, great 3D assets uh, to build our games or our, uh, our VR or AR experience. And it also very good for uh, building cross platform applications. So you can build for Unity, uh, for uh, Android, iOS, Windows, uh, even, uh, even PlayStation if you want. Uh, there's also uh, Unreal Engine. It's here for if you want to build and target very high quality graphics, uh, especially if you want to uh, develop for, uh, for consoles like Xbox Self or PlayStation, uh, you might go uh, using Unreal Engine uh, to, to build your game experience. Uh, it's very similar to, to Unity in terms of feature, but uh, you will be able to, to build higher quality graphics here. You can also use uh, Coco 2Ds to build uh, 2D and 3D games. Uh, it's a, a framework wrote in C++. Um, it's also multi-platform, so you can use it on Android and iOS uh, as you want. And if you like some uh, open source and free uh, and free, and free stuff, uh, you can take a look at the Godot game engine. Uh, it's there also to build uh, 2D and 3D games. Uh, it's open source. The code is available on GitHub. Um, there is a great community, and, you, and they provide a very nice feature. 
So that's the major four uh, game engine for Android. But I focus today on Unity and why I will make the focus on uh, this particular game engine is that uh, more, uh, more than 50% of the new mobile games um, are made with Unity. So Unity claims that number, um, yeah, a lot of uh, new games uh, are made with Unity. And uh, if you recognize the, this game, um, it's, it's made with Unity. So Earthstone uh, was made with Unity, so it's trusted by many studios, uh, such as Blizzard, uh, with, who developed uh, Earthstone with Unity. So you have also Niantic. Uh, they build uh, the most famous uh, Pokemon Go and Harry Potter Wizard with, uh, with Unity. So they kind of revolutionize uh, the IR uh, gaming application. And you can find also some other game studios like uh, Square Enix. You developed uh, Lara Croft Go by, by example. And they use Unity for uh, fast prototyping and fast iteration. And also some smaller studio here, for example, the White Elk, um, uh, who built some amazing VR experiences with Unity. So uh, game development with Unity. Uh, so Unity is available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, so you can use it even with your Ubuntu OS. So this is quite new. Uh, the support for Linux came uh, maybe uh, one or two years ago. So you can build two, 2D or 3D games. And you can prototype very fast and uh, iterate very, very easily. So you can uh, develop a game maybe in, in one or two weeks if you have the, the knowledge of the platforms. Uh, so you can also write uh, the scripts attached to, to your game engine and to, you, um, to your game assets uh, very quickly. And it supports most of the, the 3D, uh, 3D and 2D formats. So the SVX, uh, 3D, 3DX, Opt, uh, and all the 3D assets made on uh, Modo, Maya, or Blender are supported in, uh, in Unity. And also, Unity provides a great asset store. If you don't want to build your own 3D assets, you can find great ones uh, on the uh, Unity asset store. And what about Android on that? Uh, so Unity have a great support for OpenGL and Vulkan more recently. Uh, so Vulkan allows to uh, build some very high quality, high quality games, high quality graphics games. Uh, it has a native support uh, reach uh, to support native platforms. So uh, Unity can talk to Android and you Android can talk to, 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 to Unity. Uh, you can have also the Android Studio uh, export. So you can export your game uh, into Android Studio and then the Android developers can, uh, can improve or can add a new feature that can help uh, the, the Unity uh, the Unity part. And one of the great things is you can your Java and Kotlin, Kotlin file uh, as your library inside the uh, inside Unity in, inside Unity project. So uh, now we see a glimpse at Android game, um, at game development. Uh, let's see uh, how to build plugins uh, for Unity. Uh, so uh, when uh, Unity developers are getting into their uh, their war for building great uh, in, uh, Unity games, so they are more focused on uh, building the app, so adding the 3D assets, placing them, and writing a lot of uh, a lot of scripts using C Sharp for uh, animating all the 3D and 2D stuff. Uh, for setting up the, the game logic uh, uh, and all the stuff they need uh, to make the best experience. So they have the control of the rendering pipeline. So all you can see on the screen is controlled um, by, by Unity and the Unity developer of the, of the control of the rendering pipeline. So, and also they do not 
that don't worry about the uh, cross compilation shader. Uh, so uh, for Android or iOS or Windows, uh, uh, they can handle it very easily. And the, the, the top thing they have to, to put in mind is uh, they have to bring the best, the best experience at high frame. So uh, you don't want to have a game which have uh, 20 FPS. Uh, you will have a very bad experience with that. So uh, you have to target the, the minimum of the 60 uh, frame per second. So uh, Unity developers will focus on that. Um, with the help of the Android developers, you can uh, we can bring some plugins that will help us and uh, help them to to build some high quality uh, games with that. So, uh, for example, this is uh, the Unity editor. So here you can see a lot of stuff. It's uh, it's pretty pretty complete. You have a lot of a uh, lot of stuff to learn in order to to have uh, to masterize uh, the the Unity editor, and this is for our fellow Unity developers. As an Android developer, uh, you won't get ears uh, very often, uh, and you will be more focused uh, on building like the uh, the Unity plugins. So uh, with your Android Studio, so. What's up with building uh, plugins for Unity? So when you build plugins for Unity, uh, it's like you are building a uh, classic library for, for any Android apps. So you can use uh, Java or Kotlin, and you can also use uh, C or C++ if you want to go into a native library. Um, Unity has the support of the JAR, ARR, or the ASO, which is the, the native uh, native library. Um, you can also, as I said, add directly the Java files and the Kotlin classes uh, directly into your Unity project. So uh, if you want to build uh, a small uh, Unity plugins, uh, you will have to, to use what you know and uh, um, all the all the stuff you learn about uh, building uh, uh, Java or and uh, Android libraries. So let's take a look at um, an example here for building Android plugins for Unity. So here we are our Unity Unity project, and we want to build an Android player. Uh, so uh, so the Unity games can. Um, play some video contents uh, on the the new Unity Unity project. So we have our uh, Android Player plugins, which depend on ExoPlayer and OpenGL. Yes. And so now let's see, uh, for example, how to build this kind of uh, plugins for Unity. Um, let's see how we can uh, made and uh, implement the cool player methods from Unity. So we are going to focus on uh, on this part, how we can build our, our Unity plugins, our Android player. And Unity loves GNI. Uh, so you're going to see uh, we, we are uh, starting with uh, with some Java code, but we, but we are going to end up with uh, some uh, nice uh, C++ things uh cause uh we want to to build high quality games uh which means uh we have to uh, like dig in the the real core of android uh so how it works behind the hood uh so unity is gonna talk uh to the android plugins through the gni so uh all the um, the Unity scripts are wrote in C sharp uh, will open the communication between the native library and your uh, and your uh, Unity uh, and your um, and your Android library. So thanks thanks to the GNI and the, the bridge between uh, Java or Kotlin code and C plus uh, plus, we can commu communicate communicate very efficiently uh, between the Unity game and uh, the Android library. 
so let's take an example here our player bridge and this is our uh, plugin for unity so you have the context uh, you have the constructor here you can init in initialize your player with a context uh, you have a few methods here. For example, you can add subtitles, uh, do something on the main thread, and then get uh, get a track on, for example. So a method that returns something, returns a value. A value. And uh, if we keep this Java code, uh, the the Unity uh, the on the Unity side, uh, Unity web developer can. Uh, can do and handle Java code, uh, but it's going to take quite some time. Uh, they will have to write a lot of code. Uh, for example, here uh, we have we um, this is the example of calling the three methods uh, on Android, um, the three methods from the plugin into into Unity. So they have to instantiate the the, the library. Uh, they have to get the current uh, Java and Unity player, get the current activity, uh, make a new instance of the uh, of the library uh, and the, the Unity plugin, and then they have to call uh, the method uh, then based on the on the name and pass all the arguments. Uh, so they will have to write a lot of code here if they are only dealing with uh, with Java code. And there is something we can do is um, is going through uh, through the JNI and writing some plugins uh, uh, with with C C plus plus that will allow them to to write uh, very less less code. So let's see how we can do it. Uh, for, um, how we can write some C and C++ plugin. Uh, so here we are, we, we are going to define some uh, a basic function here. Uh, so let's say we want to return a float. Uh, we are gonna, going to uh, implement our function in C++. Uh, and then on the Unity side, in the, the Unity scripts, whenever they are going to uh, want to call the method, the, uh, the method from the plugin. Uh, so uh, when the plugin is built, uh, they will have a .so uh, file that they will put on the, on the Unity project. And they will just have to uh, use these two lines so they just need like to import the the aso in their scripts and then call the the function whenever they want so all the logic and all uh, the um yeah all the, the method work uh, will be on the c++ plugin so it will be more efficient uh for for our application and while we are building some C++ plugin, uh, do not forget uh, to, to use this method. Um, if uh, this is for loading the, the, the GVM and like making the bridge, uh, the bridge work between Java and, uh, and C++. So uh, if you forget to do that, uh, your plugin won't work at all. Um, if you want to to add better performance for for your call, uh, very I advise you to go through the JNI. So go to the, the C plus plus world. Um, for example, here here is another method. Like if you were uh, we were doing um, uh, ah, a C plus plus plugin. So here is a method a method where you can call uh, like. Create a new string. Uh, it says "ciao Android con uh, So it's very very efficient to to do that. Uh, the 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 game will have all the resources to work at sixty fps. Uh, this is obviously basics, but uh, if you want to to do so for like much more complex uh, Android method or complex complex Java class. You can find the class uh, with the class pass, uh, with the class definition, 
And for getting the method ID, uh, you'll find uh, the, the constructor by uh, using the Java sign signature, um, even for Kotlin classes. And then for uh, like, uh, you will have to instantiate a new, the, the, the new class. So create the new instance of the class, and then you will be able to, to return the, the new object, the new, like, the new class you, you created. So this is a much more complex example of uh, what you can do C++ and JNE side uh, in order like to, to increase your preferences when, when building your, your games. Uh, and also uh, we can uh, have, the, uh, have the benefits uh, benefit of uh, using the GL event. So for example, we have uh, a surface on our plugin for displaying the videos. Um, we want to listen all the GL events that happened on the GNI side, GNI side. So here are our event. And so we want to notify uh, the Unity script that uh, the surface is, for example, initialized at first. Uh, when the surface is shut down and when the surface is updated or is resized. So each time uh, the surface uh, will be notified by this uh, this meter, this uh, this event, send um, like uh, an event to the uh, um, to the Unity side in order to to manage the rock without uh, passing through like a big callback, big Java, a big Java callback. You will send some lightweight event uh, through the JNI thanks to GL event. And so here is uh, how you can get the events from Unity and how, how Unity can uh, issue some uh, some events to the plugins. So it works both ways. Uh, so you can set the, the native callback from Unity here with the, uh, with the native callback, and then you can call the, the GL issue plugin to, to send, send your, your event. And uh, for uh, building from uh, from Kotlin or for Java, if you want to use uh, some C++ library inside your Java library or inside your Kotlin library, do not forget to 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 use these two lines in your, for Kotlin. Use the system load library and, and as well for Java. Uh, if you forget to do that, uh, the dot so and the, all the libraries and methods from your uh, C++ library uh, won't be used, and you won't won't reach them. So, for Kotlin, uh, it's the the method uh, you can use the the word external uh, for for calling a C++ method. And from Java, uh, very the the keyboard native. Uh, if you want to call uh, some Java, some C plus plus method. So uh, we are almost done at our plugins for for Android. So uh, let's have a look at how you can uh, use. Um, and add some Java and Kotlin source to, to your plugin. So this support of directly adding Java and Kotlin files uh, and Kotlin classes to the Unity project is uh, it's quite new. Uh, it's uh, The support is available from uh, 2019. And uh, so, as I said, you can add directly in the asset folder the Java and the Kotlin classes. Uh, but you will have to, to build your Unity project uh, with Gradle in order to um, uh, to make all the things work uh, with your uh, Java and Kotlin classes. And uh, on the Unity side, on the Unity scripts, uh, yeah, Unity developer will have to use the uh, Android Java object class uh, in order to call the, the, the method from your plugins. As I said, so uh, there is a Gradle support for for Unity. So inside the the Unity editor, uh, you can access those Gradle's five. 
and you can enable some custom Gradle templates. Uh, so uh, our, uh, us as uh, as you as Android developer, we can like help a lot uh, all the all the building fields for for Android. Uh, so we, we can help a lot of uh, the, the the Unity developers like to uh, to to generate um, the and um, have a, a great uh, Gradle plugins for for their games. Uh, so uh, you can override the main templates. So you, you can add some uh, some libraries and uh, uh, yeah, you can have also some libraries into your Gradle as uh, you were doing it for your uh, your Android project. So now let's have a look at uh, Unity from Android Studio. Uh, so now you, we are going to see uh, how to export uh, an, a Unity project into Android Studio. Uh, so that's what we want uh, for us Android developers. Uh, and let's see how we can do it and how, and how we can play with it. So, uh, this is Android Studio, and this is the export exported project uh, from Unity. Uh, so uh, they provide us a lot of uh, a lot of thing here, uh, which has generated. So um, that was the version pre the previous version. So it was before the um, twenty nineteen version. So when you exported. Um, the Unity project into a uh, Android Studio project, so you will have uh, like a three or two or four four uh, four activities, uh, all generated. Uh, they generate a lot of code, uh, sometimes very useless, um, but they they made the thing better with uh, with Unity as a library. Uh, I'll talk to that later. So we want to end up. Here, so how we can do it. So on the Unity side, uh, it's very easy. I'll show you on the with the demo. Uh, we just need to uh, go to the settings and click on the export project, and then uh, click click on export. Uh, obviously, you have to target Android for exporting the exporting the project. So export your Unity project. Uh, you can do it with uh, Gradle or the uh, EL2CPP uh, as, as a build system. And if you have some Java or Kotlin classes directly in your Unity games, uh, you have to enable the symlink sources uh, in order to uh, in order to to make the the links. Um, to get these files into your exported project. Then uh, you will end up with an uh, with Android Studio project. You can open it with the IDE. Uh, you will have the full control of the, of the workflow and of the build. So you will have access to the Gradle files. You will have access to uh, the, the Unity activity. You can you will be able to send uh, some message uh, thanks to the Unity activity to uh, to your Unity game, so you can very e easily add Android code uh, when the project is exported. Uh, you can also very uh, easily manage all the dependencies you want. If you want to add some retrofit stuff, uh, if you want to add some tracking, so uh, anything you want to add as a dependency is is very easy to manage. Uh, and in the end, you can modify all the generated code. Uh, and sometimes uh, some generic code is very uh, useless. So you can very clean up all the things, uh, make, make the thing better. And so this is what the uh, Unity player looks like when they are generated uh, by Unity. So um, there's a lot of stuff. And um, one of the things that's very interesting is, is the, the Unity player. Uh, so here is the, the key object uh, for dealing with the, the Unity game. 
And for example, we can extend this activity uh, and uh, make some customization. So uh, as we exported our uh, Unity project into Android Studio, we can extend this uh, Unity player here, for, exa for example. And when you want to start uh, the, new, the new game you developed on your application, uh, you can override the, the update unity command. Um, so here, um, this is a small example. If you want to force Vulkan as a um, uh, as a base for your graphics, or you want to stick to uh, the GLES. So um, if we're gonna force Vulkan, for example, for uh, for pixels phones uh, with high quality graphics and uh, high, high quality performances. Um, so this is a, an example of how you can extend uh, your Unity player from Android Studio. But now uh, let's talk uh, a bit about the, the Unity as a library. Uh, this is the main focus here. Uh, that's what we want uh, from Unity for, for a long time ago. Uh, so. Unity as a library uh, came with Unity 2019.3. Uh, so it allows um, a Unity developer to export uh, their Unity project, Unity games. Uh, so AR, VR, 2D, or free games, uh, whatever they did on the Unity side. And uh, you can uh, this content directly in your Android app. Uh, and Unity gave us a proper library uh, integration. It was kind of hacky when you wanted to deal uh, before before Unity as a library uh, with the exported project. It was uh, an application itself, and it was very hacky to implement uh, this uh, this Unity game into an, uh, an existing Android app. But now, with Android as a library, uh, this is very convenient and very easy to add uh, like Unity games and Unity experience into your ex existing Android app. Uh, and not, uh, not to forget, it's also available for iOS and Windows. And so uh, you can um, make the export for uh, iOS and Windows as well. And uh, what will do the export? It's the same thing as before. Uh, you need to export the project, uh, simulate the sources if you have uh, if you have some, and then uh, you will need to export your project as uh, as I showed you before. And then um, you will end up uh, with this new structure. So the old one was like uh, a one application. Uh, with all the all the assets of the the GNI libraries uh, used for the the Unity part, and now we have like a proper library integration. So, um, all the stuff, uh, all the game will be contained in the in this Unity library module, um, and you will have all the dependencies you need on that. And then on the launcher path uh, here, you can like develop all the the classic stuff for Android. Uh, so uh, all, all the needs for building your Android apps, uh, your classic Android apps uh, for all, for example, your layouts, uh, fragments. Uh, where if you have to deal with some logins or some stuff uh, about like the classic Android apps, uh, it will go that way. Or you can directly use the uh, Unity library module and then uh, import it in your existing project. Um, then you, you are good to go to, to launch the, the new Unity games uh, you developed. Uh, so um, here, so also Unity, the Unity as a library provide the override Unity activity. Um, uh, you can extend this activity in order to add some some views. For example, uh, you can add uh, a button on the on the screen. So maybe a few buttons. And the very interesting part here, with the, thanks to the the Unity library, uh, you can send some messages to the Android game. So you can talk 
from the Java code to your Unity uh, to your Unity, Unity games, which is uh, which is native, and you can send some messages. Here, for example, um, I say I want to talk to um, the 3D asset Android body, and on the script attached to the uh, Android body, I'm gonna call the change color method uh, with the parameter with the param uh, green. So I'm gonna change the color of the 3D asset to green. Um, so that, that's very interesting here. So you can build uh, from your uh, uh, on the on the Unity uh, activity. You can build on top of that uh, and add some uh, some native uh, native view from Android and then talk to your Unity game. So uh, there, on the counterpart, there is some limitation so far for uh, Unity as a library. Uh, so there is no full screen rendering. Uh, there is no um, full screen rendering only. <laughs> Sorry, uh, you only have to have only one instance of the Unity runtime at a time. So uh, one game at a time. Uh, you cannot have like. Uh, uh, split screen with two Unity Unity games at the same time. Uh, you may also adapt some uh, work on your plugins to make the thing uh, to make all the thing works properly. And also, it might add a big dependency uh, to your app. Not so uh, think about uh, using App Bundle or using the uh, Play Play feature delivery uh, for the Play Store, so you can deliver your uh, your game on the go. So let's see now a uh, little demo of uh, the Unity as a library. Uh, so here is Unity. So I made a, a small game. I don't know if we can call that game. Uh, yeah, it's a small 3D experience. <laughs> so I show here a capsule, uh, a cube, and a little chip. Uh, also, I'm here. Uh, you can see it right in Italy. Uh, so uh, you'll see this in action. And if I want, if I want to export it, I need to go to build settings. Ah, just before. Uh, so in the asset here, you can find all the scripts attached to the to the three D assets. So for example. Here uh, you have the uh, the capsule uh, script. So here I'm gonna change the color of the capsule. Um, also with some uh, with some button, I will be able to uh, move it on the uh, on the three D scene. Uh, so from here I'm gonna export the project. Uh, so I'm targeting Android here. I'm exporting the project, simling the uh, simling the sources, and then clicking on export. I want to go here. Here we go. So it's starting to build. And yes, yeah, you're building. Mm, what? So anyway, uh, I already have the library exported, so uh, we are gonna end up here uh, with Unity with uh, Android Studio. So we we have our Unity library. Uh, so you can find the Unity player here. Uh, generated by Unity, and uh, on the application side, uh, so uh, I have my Unity game activity, uh, which extends uh, Unity player activity. I'm I added some views, so two buttons for once for randomize the color of the capsule, another one for quitting, and then uh, I add some. Uh, some uh, fab for uh, moving forward, backward, uh, left. Um, all right, so uh, how does it look like on the phone? 
so here we are. Uh, this is the Unity as a library sample I developed. So this is a splash screen. So this is your app current applications, uh, your existing application you developed. Uh, you are doing all the stuff you want here. And then I'm going to start the Unity game. So here, yep, uh, yes. So here, here is our uh, very high quality games developed by Unity. Uh, it's a triple A experience. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great, great game. Um, anyway, so when you click uh, on the capsule, you can change the color of the capsule. And here, I'm gonna do the same thing, but from the from the uh, Android part, or so from uh, the Android activity, from from the button I added, I can also send some message and randomize the color. Uh, and I'll send a new color to the Android games. And also here I can play a bit about uh, with the, the joystick kind of uh, the arrows, like moving forward. Uh. So you can do a lot of stuff with uh, Unity as a library and you can uh, build some very great experience mixing both Android development and Unity development. Uh, so now let's get, let's get back to the slides. Uh, and, uh, if you want to know more about Unity as a library, uh, there is some good documentation on the uh, Unity, uh, Unity side. Uh, they also provide some uh, some sample and uh, some tools and some very nice how to do it uh, on the forum. Uh, so you can go to these links. And um, one thing I want also to do, talk to you say it's uh, yeah uh, what about Android but from a Unity point of view. Uh, maybe uh, someone uh, in the audience uh, uh, would say, hey, what about Android from a Unity point of view? Um, yeah, I was about to tell you. So uh, for uh, from Unity developers, uh, Android uh, is very is very great platform for building uh, Android games. Uh, so it's easy to build, easy to to build deploy uh, Android and game applications. Uh, it has a great support uh, for OpenGL and Vulkan, and also uh, very uh, great uh, compatibility with uh, with Shader Lab. So they can do great work uh, with Unity for making great uh, Android games. Uh, and as an Unity developer, uh, they don't really need to to dig into the Android documentation. So knowing all the stuff as we as we know as an Android developer, so all the things related to the lifecycle, uh, all the fragments things, all all the UI stuff, how you can uh, you can build your layout with XML or something like that. To to dig to really dig into the Android documentation, so uh, that's very nice from for for them. But uh, there are also a few drawbacks here. Um, is that the uh, Unity implementations uh, is not very open for Unity. Uh, so there is a lot of abstraction. Uh, you don't see under the hood how Unity is built for Android. And um, also uh, building UI component uh, it's very painful, uh, especially for building UI components on the Unity side. So uh, these things um, we can bring in on the uh, Android side sometimes. So to to make the the things better for for Unity developers, and uh, also the the Unity integration uh, before Android as a library was very was not great. Uh, was very hacky. But now we have uh, Unity as a library here. 
And if you want to know more about Android games and Android development, uh, you can go to the uh, developerandroid.com slash game. Uh, this is a documentation provided by Google. Uh, I also wrote uh, a small article, uh, maybe three or three years ago, uh, I think, about how to bring uh, ExoPlayer uh, into Unity, how to build a Unity player for for VR VR players, and also you can dig into the uh, <clears throat> the Unity plugins uh, for for Android. Uh, documentation made by Unity. Um, it's uh, it's very efficient, and you are you're gonna learn, learn a lot of uh, how to build uh, plugins for for Android. And yeah, we reached the end. So uh, thank you very much, uh, grazie mille, and uh, have fun with Unity and Android. And if you have any question, I'd be pleased to answer it.